My God is real! Yeah. Yeah. Fire up! If you guys don't have the notes, please turn to the person next to you. We'll turn to one of these guys, or one of these girls, or whatever. And we'll send them over to you. So we've got the English notes so you can follow along. Come on. So if Martin and Jeff, if you want to help these boys out, Heck that yeah. would be awesome. Yes. So the title of today's sermon is Having a Promised Land Mentality. Come on. Wow. Come on. You know, I was trying to prep for this sermon idea. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I kind of figured, I was like, man, I don't think I'm really ready to do it. So, uh, I'm a kind of like the Holy Spirit inside me, kind of, uh, let it do it. Come yeah. on. Uh, so prayerfully, if it goes well, then you know why. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. yeah. So, today we're going to take a look at the miracle of the day that the sun yeah. and the moon stood still. Yeah, yeah. appreciate it. You guys ever seen the sun and the moon stand still? No. No. I bet you haven't. Yeah. It happened once, believe Whoa, it or not. Wow. Let me set the scene for y'all real quick. Come on. Yeah. So after the destruction of Jericho like we saw last week, and I, by the way, the Hivite people of Gibeon yeah. sent ambassadors to trick this guy called Joshua mm -hmm. yeah. and the Israelites into making a treaty with them. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so the Israelites were commanded to destroy all non-Israelites. Wow. Um, the Canaanites in Palestine when they reached the promised land. This yeah. land was to be theirs. It was their promised land. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the title really comes from. It's like, that's my land. Okay. Yeah. I want that. Right. This is my mentality. I'm going to do whatever I can to get that land. Are yeah. you with me right here? Come on. Come on. The Canaanites presented themselves as ambassadors from a distant powerful land. We pick up in Joshua chapter 9. Mm. And we'll read from verse 7. It says, The Israelites said to the Hivites, <coughs> Perhaps you live near us. So how can you, we make a treaty with you? We are your servants, they said to Joshua. Mm -hmm. But Joshua asked, Who are you and where did you come from? <laughs> they answered, Your servants have come from a very distant country. Mm -hmm. Because of the fame of the Lord your God, we have heard reports of him. All that he did in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So without consulting God, what the Israelites did is they entered into a covenant or a peace treaty with Yeah. Them. That's what ends up happening. So in Joshua 9, 14, it says, the Israelites sampled their provisions, but they did not inquire of God. Whoa. Interesting. So without first inquiring of God, yeah. we too can be led astray. Mm, right. Okay. In Joshua 9, verse 16, it says, three days after they made the treaty with the Gibeonites, the Israelites heard that they were neighbors living near them. So before they realized, they were like, oh man, these guys are a distant country. But because they didn't inquire of God, they soon started to realize these guys are actually our neighbors. They're not good for anything. They're actually not helping us at all. And that's the same thing when we don't inquire of God. Yeah. Yeah. We miss out on the promises of the promised land. Let me ask you guys. What are you not inquiring of God today? <coughs> What's your sin? And what does God want you to change? Are you inquiring God? Here's a nice one for the guys. Maybe some of the sisters as well. Who should you be dating? Oh. Or what should you like? Oh. Are you inquiring of God? Oh, wow. Oh. Come on. How about where you live? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where you live? Or... Where, where to work? Yep. Mm -hmm. What job should I take? Mm -hmm. Are you inquiring God? When to do something? To go somewhere? Does your heart want to do something and would God approve of that thing that you want to do in your heart? Are you inquiring God? Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's how I should go about doing something. You know, if you don't inquire of God in everything yeah. that you do, you will fail to succeed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I promise you that. Yeah, come on, preach it. Right. May not be in the short term, but in the long term, you will fail. Right, mm -hmm. come on. You don't inquire of God. Yeah, come on. You know, our prayer should be full of asking God. Yeah. It should be full of asking God. You know, then this will be followed up by reading the Bible for the answers. Right. Here's the way that God communicates to us. We talk to God because we like to talk. All right. yes. Even though God gave us two ears, we still like to talk more yes. than we listen. So we pray. Okay, now God listens to us. He's like, okay, uh, anything else? Okay. And then we find our answers in the Bible. Okay, God doesn't speak to us like He used to. 
Okay, they did that for the Israelites. <laughs> they didn't have the Bible back then, by the way. That's probably yeah. why. Okay. But now he speaks to us through his word. Yeah. Okay. Come, on. Come on. Come on. It's not to uh, edify our feelings, okay, or please our hearts, but to simply find God's answer. Right. Is why we pray and why we read the Bible. Yeah, come on. You know, when we don't inquire of God, we too get deceived into thinking that our ways are right. Yeah. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Uh oh. Can't tell me nothing. Um, guy called Kanye West would say that. <laughs> and he lost a lot of money. Uh, are you seeking advice of God yeah. and man? Because you know what? This is the key to success. Come on. Come on. What's interesting is I actually get disappointed at the lack of people that call me for advice mm. instead of just going about their own ways. Mm. I rarely, rarely ever get anyone that calls me for advice. I think the only person that's really asked me for advice lately is actually David. Mm. But no one calls up. No one's like, should I do this? Should I do that? Like, help me understand. Mm. It's like no one's asking the leaders. Mm. No one's asking people that have been there, done that. Mm -hmm. We should be asking constantly. Annoy me on the phone. Mm -hmm. I want to get sick of you. <laughs> I want to get sick of you calling me. At the moment, I don't have anyone calling me. And that's got to change. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 24, verse 6, it says, Surely you need guidance to wage a war, and victory is won through many advisors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get advice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Challenge you. Write a sermon on advice. Only using scriptures and proverbs. Mm -hmm. You'll find at least around 30 to 40 scriptures. Wow. I'm getting wow. advice. Okay. That's a book of wisdom right there, if mm. you didn't know. Mm. You know, it can be said that those who are bad at seeking advice yeah. off man are not good at, good at seeking advice off God yeah. as well. Yeah. Come on. As it's a character issue, it's a pride and humility issue. Yeah. Mm. But it's not until we humble ourselves before God mm -hmm. that we become right before God. Yeah, come yeah. on. You know, it's interesting. It's the it's the humility of the Gibeonites that actually saved them. Yeah. Now they dug themselves into a bit of a trench right there, mm -hmm. um, but their humility is what actually saved them. So yeah. they understood they weren't on the right side of God and His people after they tricked them. Mm -hmm. They realized it. They got it. All right, okay, I've done messed up. All right, not good. Yeah, they were prepared to do whatever it took, and they were clever about it. Yeah. You see, they were prepared to be hardworking servants in the kingdom of God with no hope of ever being promoted, mm -hmm. rather than fight against God's will. Wow, okay. Talk about humility. Come on. No hope of going up the status or ladder or whatever. Mm -hmm. Talk about humility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of attitude that David had. Mm -hmm. One of the most humble guys. He says in Psalms, this was a king by the way. Yeah. He used to rule all of Israel. In Psalms 84 verse 10 it says, Better is one day in your courts, than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Wow. We'd rather be a doorkeeper. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, we must right. always be humble. Yeah. And realize that it's never about the title. Right. Mm -hmm. Ever. Our self-worth or any of that, but simply the privilege of serving in God's kingdom. Yeah. Like I said on Wednesday, for those that were here, it's not about what you want. Yeah. It's about what God wants. Yeah, come on. If that means putting other people above you or in front of you. Yeah. That's what God wants. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But do you have the humility to see it that way? Yeah. That mm -hmm. that's what God wants. Come yeah. on, come on. You know, it's humility that brings unity and pride that leads to conflict. In Proverbs yeah. 13, verse 10, it says, Where there is strife, there is pride. Mm. But wisdom is found in those who take advice. Yeah. Right. It's found in those who take advice. Let's take a look at the characteristics of the proud versus the humble. Come on. You know, uh, a proud person sees himself as more spiritual, mm -hmm. or smarter, mm -hmm. or better than others. Yeah. Yeah. Humble person wants to learn from everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Proud people blame others for their problem mm -hmm. and never take responsibility. Ooh. Think called ownership mm. right so i was saying this also before but for those that didn't hear it if my wife ever makes a mistake <laughs> guess whose fault it is yes. yep. my fault 
<laughs> what? <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> my fault. That's called ownership. Yeah, come on. It's called ownership. If I don't think it's my fault, I'm prideful. Mm. <laughs> That's what that is. Mm, come on, yeah, come on. on. Come on. Humble people are dependent on friends. Yes, that's right, they're not independent. Mm. They're dependent on friends, family, colleagues, and especially God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then they lean into them for support for the good of the whole. Mm -hmm. Proud people rely on themselves mm. to get things done. Okay. You may be able to sprint far, and sprint ahead and go further than people straight away, but it's with many help that people get to go further. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Proud people put themselves first and always pursue their own agenda. Mm -hmm. What's in it for me? Yeah. What's in it for me? Come Even on. at the expense of others in their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's seven symptoms of a prideful heart. Yeah. I'll list them out for you guys. Wow. Okay. Come might, on. Uh, might shock you a little bit. First one, fear. Oh, okay. Are you fearful? Mm. You're fearful. You're prideful. Wow. Okay. Damn. <laughs> wow. Pride is at the root of fear and anxiety because we don't trust God enough to take care of us. Mm. Well, one of my friends, uh, Schuster, he's also from, he's from mainland China. Yeah, go on Schuster. And he goes, uh, if, you, if you don't, um, what was it, if you don't trust God, um, or if you just have uh, trouble trusting in like, anything, you just don't trust God. Mm. Like, uh, there was something that he said that just absolutely blew my mind. I was like, dang, like, I'll never forget it to this day. Mm -hmm. But apparently, I have right now. So, anyways. <laughs> 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 I know what he said, it's in my heart. Amen. It's in your heart. All right. <laughs> so, first one, fear. Next one, entitlement. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, you might not think that you're entitled. Let me, let me help you maybe see it. <laughs> Thinking we deserve things because we're owed it. Mm. I worked hard for that. I deserve it. Yeah. You don't deserve nothing. Mm. Don't care how hard you work for your degree, don't care how hard mm. you work for that job or that position or that title. You're just entitled if you think that you're owed it. Mm. You know, where the Bible teaches us, we don't deserve anything because of our sins and any good thing is a gift from God. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Ingratitude. Yeah. This comes from not being grateful for the things we do get, <coughs> but simply expecting things. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, if you want to learn what gratitude actually looks like, go to a third world country. Yeah. yeah. I'll teach you all about it. One of my mm -hmm. friends, he's Nigerian. Mm -hmm. um, his name's Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. And he used to tell me, he's like, man, it was awesome when I was a kid. You know, we didn't have a soccer ball, but we had a little can. And I used to sleep in the dirt and we used to kick the can around. Mm -hmm. That was our soccer ball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk about gratitude. Yeah, come on. You used to thank God for electricity and all this kind of stuff in the prayer. I'm like, I don't even thank God for that. Mm. It didn't even occur in my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, people pleasing. Mm. Come on. Simply looking good in front of others to save face. And people who do this want to look better than they actually are, although they're simply lying to the person and to themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on. Prayerlessness. Yeah, come on. Pride deceives us into thinking we can do life on our own. Mm -hmm. That we're capable, we're independent, mm -hmm. unstoppable, self-reliable. Wow. Why well, not Beyonce? I don't huh? think Beyonce still needed Jay-Z. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. But a humble heart submits itself to God yeah. in prayer because it knows it cannot do anything without it. Yeah, true. Sure. Hypocrisy. Come on. When you're proud, you elevate your status. Forgetting the mercy God has shown you. You think you're better and you're holier than everyone else. And you easily find fault with others. Mm -hmm. Pride produces a hypocritical spirit. You can't see the own, your own plank mm. or the little facade that's in your face. Mm -hmm. But first you need to take that out. Yes. Then you can start looking. Yes. Right, now, come on. First focus on yourself. It's so like Michael Jackson likes to say, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Another one is rebellion. Rebellion against God turns into resistance towards the Word and the leaders He has placed in our lives. Yeah, come on. Any leader that's been placed in our lives, no matter how you feel or whatever it is, if they've been put there, they've been put there by God. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like the fact that, they don't, that they've been put there, you just don't like the fact of what God's actually doing. Wow. You're not upset at them, you're upset at God. Yeah. That's what's happening. Come on. This is shown in a lack of submission. 
Yeah. So what's the characteristics of a humble person? Oh, guys, I'm glad you asked. Thanks for asking. Well, they're excellent at relationships mm -hmm. and see everyone as better than themselves. Mm -hmm. They make difficult decisions with ease as they are more interested in what is right than being right. Mm -hmm. right. As they seek to put others first. Yeah, mm -hmm. come on. How do you know you're good at this? You let other people go in the elevator and all that kind of stuff before you as you're going into the MTR mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or the train or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Little things kind of expose it. Mm -hmm. If you drive, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they make difficult decisions with ease. As, um, sorry, they really, really mm -hmm. listen. Yeah, yeah. They don't have an answer before they speak because they want to hear others out and understand. Yeah, come on. I know if you're a dude, this is how we think. We quit, we got like they're halfway through their sentence and we're like, I already got an answer for this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're laughing because you know it's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Without first seeking to understand. Right. You already got an answer. I know what I do it many times. You're just not hearing them out. And it's private. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They speak their minds freely as they have no problem being corrected if they're wrong. Yeah. No fear of looking bad in front of others. Mm -hmm. Humility is not insecurity. Yeah, the come opposite. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're completely transparent with their lives. Transparency is like if there's a glass, I can see through it. It's transparent. Okay. With their thoughts, mm -hmm. their sins, their finances, and problems as they fear God and are secure in God. Let me ask you this. Yeah. If you had a television right here on your shoulder and it walked around all day and yeah. everything that you thought was in that television, uh -huh. wow. would you be happy to walk around? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's because we're afraid to get open. Yeah. It's because you're afraid to get open. Yeah. And you're scared of what people will, uh, think about you. Mm -hmm. It's because of prideful. They take challenges well. That's what a humble person does. And they change quickly as they're focused on pleasing God and not man. Mm -hmm. They take full responsibility of their sin and the part they played in other people's faults. Yeah. Completely. They ask for lots and lots of help and advice as they never think that they've arrived, even when they get old and quote-unquote know everything. Mm -hmm. They never think they arrived. It's interesting. A lot of young people go, I know it all. <laughs> and then a lot of old people go, I don't know anything. It tells you a lot. It really does. Yeah. You see, if you want to succeed with God, you must be supremely humble. As First Peter chapter five, verse five says, "All of you, clothe yourself with humility toward one another, mm -hmm. because God appraises the proud, but shows favor to the humble." Mm -hmm. You see, when we don't clothe with ourselves with humility, we're just not clothing ourselves at all. Wow. And we're okay. not naked oh. and embarrassed okay. in front of all. I've got two points for you guys. My first point is this. Always embrace the battle. Come on. Always embrace the battle. We're going to pick up in Joshua chapter 10, verses 1. It says, Now Adoni Zedek, the king of Jerusalem, heard that Joshua had taken Ai and totally destroyed it, mm -hmm. doing to Ai and its king as he had done to Jericho and its king, and that the people of Gibeon had made a treaty of peace with Israel and had become their allies. He and his people were very, pre, uh, very much alarmed at this because Gibeon was an important city, like one of the royal cities. It was larger than I, and all its men were good fighters. Mm -hmm. So Adoni Zedek, king of Jerusalem, appeared to Ho Hoa, king of Hebron, Peron, king of Jamoth, Jaipha, king of Lachish, mm -hmm. and Debar, king of Eglon. Come up! And help me attack Gideon, he said, mm -hmm. because it's made peace with Joshua and the Israelites. Then the five kings of the Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, Hebron, Jamoth, Lachish, and Eglon joined forces. Mm -hmm. They moved up with all their troops and took up positions against Gideon and attacked it. Yeah. The Gibeonites then sent word to Joshua in the camp of Gilgal, Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us. Help us because all the Amorite kings from the hill country have joined forces against us. Mm, wow. You know, if there's one thing that Satan hates, there's one thing the devil hates. Yeah? It's humility. 
Yeah. Wow. It's true. It's true. Preach it. Come on. That we must not give in to fear and back down from being humble. Yeah. You see, where Satan sees peace, he wants to make war. Humility and unity alarm him because he wants to bring division. Mm-hmm. Satan knows he can bring disunity among the people, yeah. and he knows a win. Yeah. If he can do that, if he can bring disunity between any of you guys, yeah. between any of the people that you know, he's like, I got you. That's it. Yeah. You know, if you're not humble, then you will stumble. Mm. Super yeah. simple. If you're not humble, yeah. Come on. you will stumble. Yeah. yeah, come on. A humble person is not afraid of failure or anything. Yes, even themselves. The perfect humility is confidence in God. Mm-hmm. In order to be right, you must accept that you can be wrong, so you can create unity. Come on. There's never a, oh, I did this and I did this better, and you're just, yeah. you're just in sin, man, and you need to get over it, and you're wrong. Yeah. It's like, look, for, look to be wrong. Instead of just trying to point out other people's sin, like, look mm-hmm. to be wrong. Like, what can I do better? Mm-hmm. I'd rather be wrong. Like, help me. If I'm wrong, like, help me change. Yeah. But too quickly, we're, we're wanting the other people to do that. Mm-hmm. Instead of first looking at ourselves. Come on. You know, being humble does not require you to do things the world's way, mm-hmm. but God's way. Yeah, right. come on. Doing things God's way yeah. always works out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You guys sure you want to hear the word of God this time? Yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. You know, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, trying to do God's way mm-hmm. once upon mm-hmm. a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of you might know, uh, but this one time, I was, uh, you know, I was, I was chilling in uh, my favorite place, my favorite restaurant, the restaurant of restaurants. Wow! McDonald's. I love it. Oh, wow. I was chilling nice. in McDonald's. Mm. And I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm writing up a little, my first sermon ever. Oh wow, uh, okay. And, um, and I'm, <laughs> you know, the private person ever, I'm doing it on Solomon. And I, I'm i sitting there and, and, I, and I saw these kids like just kind of walk in. And they kind of reminded me of myself, they were rat backs. They were the worst of the worst. You know the guys that kind of run around with a scooter and they like swear at everyone? And they're like kind of abusive to people? Oh, wow. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe you don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> but they do in the Western. Uh, uh, countries, and and they started abusing the staff at McDonald's. Oh no, it wasn't McDonald's. It was Hungry Jack. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Burger right. King. If you don't know what Hungry Jack's is. Alright. Um, they started abusing the staff. They got their food. They were chucking it on the windows and all this kind of stuff. They had the old people. They started getting furious. They had the um, staff members. They were getting furious. Even the other people that were middle aged and whatever. They were getting furious. And I was like, nobody's doing anything about it. Is no one going to say anything? What do you do in that moment? Question, what do you do? Start the thing. Maybe we should just do what Jesus does. I walk up to the kids and get up. I walk over. I ask them how they're doing. What are you guys up to? They go, what do you want? <laughs> okay. Just wondering if I could buy you guys some food. They were shocked. Why would I buy it? Why is this guy trying to buy me food? Uh-huh. It's like, I don't know. I just saw you guys didn't have much. Just wanted to buy you guys some food. And they, oh, whatever. I'm like, don't worry, I'm gonna get it for you. And I like, go up to it, I'll buy it. I get the receipt and I give it to them. Mm. And I go, is it okay if I quickly just wipe up the mess that you guys have made on the window and the floors and stuff? Is that okay with you? They go, uh, okay. Uh-huh. Wipe up the mess on the floor and the windows. I go back to my service and have a great day. Mm. Silent. Yeah. Didn't say anything. Grandparents were shocked. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 The counter staff going. <laughs> what the heck just happened? You got the middle aged people going. So the kids do that right there. And they walked out. Silent. They thanked me. Mm. And they walked out. Would you have done the same? Mm-hmm. Would you have done it God's way? Mm-hmm. Or would you be like everyone else and just go, you guys need to just shut up and get out? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Done it your way. Mm-hmm. You know, what creates disunity? Mm-hmm. Resisting God's will in your life is what creates disunity. Mm-hmm. You know, if these kings were willing to give up their worldly dreams instead of attack Gibeon, things would have been a little bit different. 
You know, if they would have been given up their possessions, they could have avoided all the violence. Entitlement. True humility and salvation is found in a complete lack, which is no entitlement. Mm -hmm. In Luke 9, verses 24 to 25, it says, Whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to lose their life for me will save it. Mm -hmm. right. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit the very self? Mm -hmm. Doing anything behind anyone's back, that you wouldn't do to their face. Mm. You wouldn't do to their face. One of my friends, Quaid, would always tell me, and he's like, you know what, my dad told me something. Mm. I won't just tell you, oh, I won't just, I'm never going to talk behind your back, I'm going to say it to your face. <laughs> and then say something mean to your face. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, at least he did it to your face. Right. I think it's better someone does it to your face and does it behind your back. Mm. Mm. You know, valuing your opinions as truth and trying to force them on others. Mm. It's another thing that creates disunity. Yeah. Philippians 2 verses 3 to 4 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or yeah. conceit, rather than humility. Value others right. above yourselves. Come on. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Mm -hmm. You know, God blesses humility yeah. when you have this kind of mindset. Because what happens in Joshua 10, verses 7 to 8, it says, So Joshua marched up to Gilgal with his entire army, including all the best fighting men. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. Mm -hmm. See, after the, the Gibeonites lied and tricked Joshua to making a treaty with them, they got humble. Mm -hmm. They served the Israelites to which the Israelites were able to serve them. Mm -hmm. Imagine if the Gibeonites never humbled themselves mm. and served the Israelites in the first place. What if they just never did it? Totally destroyed. Yeah, yeah that's right. How terrible it would have been for them. Yeah. You know, Joshua could have thought about their lack of integrity from before. Mm -hmm. He could have just been like, yeah, you guys deserve to be destroyed after what you did to us. Mm -hmm. But the question that raises, because that's not what he did, mm. <laughs> but would you let other people's <coughs> lack of integrity destroy your integrity? Mm. Would okay. you? Come on. Integrity is found in you doing what you say and keeping your word at all costs. Yeah. Most common areas um, of lack of integrity by Christians are seen in a few things. Mm -hmm. Miscontribution. Mm. Not giving. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lateness. Mm -hmm. right. Just rocking up late. Mm -hmm. Not returning emails or calls within the 24 hour period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Half truths. I'm telling people some of the truth, but it's not the whole truth. I'm late because of this, but this is the real reason I'm late. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to tell them that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is where integrity is always tested. Oh. It te it's tested when there is pressure or hardship, mm -hmm. not when there's plenty. Yeah. Plenty of money, plenty of time. Or plenty of sleep, amen. Yeah. It's like, if you don't have time, mm -hmm. you simply just need to make time. That everyone has time on. for everything. Come on. Right. Everyone yeah. has time for everything. Right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I really appreciate uh, the integrity of uh, Chi and Themis. Yeah, yeah, come on. You know, they just went to Manila, but they were dog sick. Like, mm. they were sick sick. Yeah. Like, Themis couldn't even get out of bed. Mm -hmm. But she said, I'm going to this conference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She could have made every excuse not to go. Yeah. But she's like, I'm going. Yeah. Yeah, come on. You know, and then there's those that don't have integrity at all. <laughs> um, he was playing like a little bit of a card game last night. And then one of them was like, uh, well, even though I'm cheating in front of you, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna just cheat in front of you regardless of whatever. <laughs> <laughs> there's integrity and then there's a lack of integrity. <laughs> Even if you're losing, just go, it is what it is. <laughs> and take what he's doing the right thing, even when no one else is watching, or even when people are watching in this case. <laughs> our success in leadership is closely related to our integrity, mm -hmm. as is our failure to a lack of it. In yep. Psalm 78, verse 72, as David shepherds them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands, he led them. Never forget, this was actually a hallmark of Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is what Jesus was completely all about. He never said it himself. You only know what people say about you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Mark 12, verses 30, it says, 
after an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by surprise. Mm -hmm. The Lord threw them into confusion before Israel. So Joshua and the Israelites defeated them completely at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road going up to Beth Horeb and cut them down all the way to Azar and Machabah. Mm -hmm. As they fled before Israel, on the road down to Beth Horeb to Azekar, the Lord mm -hmm. hurled large hailstones down on them. Mm. And more of them died from the hell than they were killed by the swords of the Israelites. Wow, okay. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Son, stand still over Gibeon, and you moon over the valley of Abidjan. So the sun stood still, mm -hmm. and the moon stopped. Wow. Yeah. Till the nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it's written in the book of Joshua. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. Wow. There has never been a day like it before or since. Mm -hmm. A day when the Lord listened to a human being. Wow. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. And Joshua returned with all the Israelites to the camp of Gilgal. You know, here we see a complete successful story yeah and victory right here joshua and the people worked hard that was their mentality they went all night yeah if they were going to catch up with these guys and save the immigrants they pushed all night until they were all killed not giving into tiredness uh-huh you see he wanted no hard victories yeah that'll do they're running away no they kept going yeah they wanted no reoccurring problem do you see things all the way through? Mm -hmm. Or are you just making half the effort mm. in your life? Wow, come on. So, you know, the other army thought that because of their numbers, it was going to be a walk in the park. But Joshua and the Israelites worked harder. Yeah, well, come that on. That was their mentality. I'm going to work harder than you. I'll tell you what, there's a lot more people smarter than me. I bet you all are smarter than me. I'm actually quite dumb. I'll tell you what, I'm going to work harder. Well, work harder then. Come on. That'll Come be on. the difference. Come on. That's the difference between all the people. One of the <coughs> leaders that I look up to a lot, his name is Joe. Mm -hmm. He's not smart, actually. He didn't even uh, graduate uh, English in high school. Mm. But he's written two books. Yeah. He's got another third book on yeah. the map. Yeah. He's got his PhD, he's got his doctorate. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? He works harder. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Come on. That's all he does. He's like, I might not be smart, but I'll definitely outwork you. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. it. Come on. Come on, Joe. You know, extreme hard work is something anyone can do. Yeah. Do you work really hard? Yeah, come on. Is a famous saying that we have in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Don't work until you're tired. Mm -hmm. Work until it's done. Mm -hmm. Don't okay. work until you're tired. <coughs> work until it's done. All right. Not pursuing God with a whole heart is the exact reason people never find God. Yeah. Let me say that again. Not pursuing God with a whole heart is the exact same reason that people never find God. Mm. Come on. Because they never made the effort. Yeah. It's super simple. If you're trying to find God today, unless you give your whole heart, yeah. you're never going to find Him. Yeah, preach it. Cool. I've seen it so many times. I was talking to some guys yesterday. I was like, the problem is, you're trying to find God, but you're never going to find it. Mm -hmm. You're going to do it with a whole heart. And so, of course, you'll never ever find God. Yeah. So you change your mentality. Very true. You know, God was with Joshua. Yeah. God was with him. It was God who worked to throw their enemies into confusion. It was God who killed most of them with the hailstones. As long as you're with God, God is with you. Yeah, true. Come on. Do you expect God to do most of the work? I hope you guys expect God to do most of the work in your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. While we must work hard to make things happen, it's always God who does most of the work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He blesses those who try and work as hard as him. These are called wholehearted people. Yeah, come on. That's what it is. Yeah. That's what the kingdom's built on. It's built on wholehearted people. Yeah. He blesses those who try and work as hard as him. In 2 Chronicles 16 verse 9, great scripture, it says, For the eyes of the Lord reign throughout the earth yeah. to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Mm -hmm. What comes yeah. first? Strength or commitment? This scripture goes, if you become committed, I'll give you strength. Mm. That's like with anything. Well, I need to understand the Bible and, uh, and grow stronger in my faith before I can really start committing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> pa 
Poppycock. Oh, wow. <laughs> Poppycock. Come on. Rubbish. Yeah. Not true. Yeah. It's only when you start getting committed that you can actually start getting strength. Yeah, come on. If you don't vote yourself to a basketball team, <laughs> you're not great straight away. It's not your strength. Yeah. But first you've got to commit to it before you get good at it. Yeah, that's right. The principle works in life, and the principle also works with God. Mm -hmm. yeah, come on. Come have on. you seen your hard work move God's heart? Yeah. How have you seen your hard work move God's heart? I really got to give it up to West. Wow, well, come, really come on, You know, this chick is always working hard. Yeah, mm. come on. She works hard all the time. I see it. She's like, she's like, I've got like seven papers. You, I've got to do this. <laughs> wow. So it's no coincidence yeah. that she's met Abigail. Yeah, come yeah. on. Abigail's studying the Bible, and I reckon she's going to become a Christian. Wow! Come on, Abigail! Heck yeah! You know, I think most of the studies from Polly U mm -hmm. come from Matthew. Why? Because mm -hmm. Matthew works hard. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. He goes for it. Yeah. I think about someone who really goes hard in, in praying to God and trying to see things happen. Mm -hmm. I think about my beautiful wife. Come on, man! My amazing wife. She's like, I'm thinking about special next year. Wow. And so she gets a, and she prays to God about it. God goes, I'm going to give you an opportunity by one of the aunties um, goes, we got this awesome designing brand and I want you to promote it. It's called Lux. Wow. Um, what do you think? I'm like, yeah, yeah. baby! <laughs> We're thinking about special right here. God's coming through, but she had to put in the hard work and pray mm -hmm. to see it happen. Mm -hmm. If you want to know something that will really inspire you, if not all these things happen already, then look at that girl at the back right there, Nikkei. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's a PhD student. Oh. And we all know how PhD students work really, really hard. They don't have a lot of time. But in PolyU, she has the most women's studies. Even though she is a PhD student. You want to talk about working hard? Look at Nikkei. Do you expect God to do the impossible? Joshua did! Yeah. He expected! He went, God, you're going to have to do the impossible! Come on. He didn't just think it. He didn't just try and have a little bit of faith about it. He expected. It says the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There's never been a day yeah. like it before or since. Yeah. A day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Mm -hmm. Joshua had a prayer life that produced never before seen miracles. Yeah. Never before. And we think that Moses' one was pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and sure. along comes this guy called Joshua. He's like, you ever seen the sun and the moon stand still? <laughs> about to watch me whip. Yeah, about to watch me name name. <laughs> sure, Come on. Come you know, on. his prayer life wasn't hidden. But he said it before the whole assembly of the Israelites. Yeah. Your integrity is on the line right there, because what happens if it doesn't happen? Yeah. Well, You're a bad leader. Ooh. Joshua wasn't insecure about his prayer life, though. Right. No, it wasn't. Mm -mm. Or if God will come through for him. Do you pray like Joshua? Do you pray like Joshua? Come on. Perhaps this is why he has his prayers answered. And yeah. Come on. Come on. That's the difference. Yeah. That's the difference. He expected God to work. Come on. That's what he expected. Are your prayers achieving the impossible? Firstly, do you believe God will do the impossible in your life? Mm -hmm. In Matthew 17, verse uh, 20, he says, He replied, Because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as uh, small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Yeah. Nothing will be impossible for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Second. Do you pray sincerely for the impossible in your daily Bible readings? Oh, come on. Do you do that? Do you pray for the impossible? Thirdly, do you talk like God would have already made it happen? Mm -hmm. God, I know you've done this. I'm not praying like, God, I know you're already going to baptize my little brother and my best friend Jake. Yeah, come on. I know you're going to do it. Yeah, you will. I can't wait for the day that it happens because the lives that they're going to impact. Yes, yeah. That's yeah. how you should pray. Come on. Then, does the impossible actually happen mm -hmm. in your life? If not, why not? Come on. Mm. Come on. You know, 
it was interesting when I was talking to some of the boys was with Martin yesterday, talking about how awesome it is being a Christian. Yeah. And it's one of the best lives that you could ever have. Yeah. And it's challenging, just like life is. Mm -hmm. Christianity teaches you how to deal with storms, not just to uh, escape the storms. Yes. The storms will always come. Right. They'll always come. Right. Come on. And I uh, was talking about how we lived in a beautiful apartment. We thought it was small until we came to Hong Kong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we, you know, it was like two stories, and we're like, well, this is, I mean, you know, anyways. And, and I was talking about, you know, it's interesting because everything in our house, you wouldn't believe it if I told you, but it's free. Wow. We had all kind of stuff. Like we had a big TV. We had these beautiful corduroy couches. We had all this kitchenware, rusk, whatever you want to name it. We had this awesome bed. That's wow. actually like it was hotel quality bed, Ooh. bed frame, like desk, whatever. Mm. All for free. Come on. That's impossible. Wow. Yeah, for you. <laughs> I got God on my side. Yeah. That family SUV van or whatever, like SUV car. Guess what I got that for? Free. Wow. Free. Wow. Everything I have is for free. Come on. How? I believe in God. You don't. It's very simple. I believe that the impossible happens in my life. Actually, I yeah. expect things to get to get things for free. Yeah. I expect it. Mm -hmm. I know things will come for free. Yeah. The reason you probably won't get free things is because you don't expect you'll get it for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Or you just don't believe in God. Yeah. Come on. It's just that simple. Uh -huh. All things are possible. And when God says all things, let me emphasize the fact when he says all things are free. Uh, possible, sorry. Yeah. And free, if you believe it. <laughs> Mark chapter 10, verses 27. Yeah. It says, Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible. Yeah. But not with God. Mm. All things are possible with God. Yeah. All things. You see, in order for Joshua to take the promised land, he had to believe in the impossible. No matter, no, uh, no one had ever taken the promised land before, yeah. but he believed he could do it. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, people see this as impossible. It's not impossible. Yeah, right. God can do it. Yeah, right. We must go where no man has ever dared to convert people before. Yeah. Yeah. Mark my words. This movement of God is going to go into places that we have never gone, or that no man dares to go. Yeah, yeah, sure, come on. We're going to go into North Korea. Wow. But you think I'm joking. Come on, Jeff. We're not joking. They will yeah. kill you if you go there. Yeah. I'm not joking. Yeah, come on. We're going to go to little places like Vanuatu, mm -hmm. where they'll eat you alive. Wow. And we will evangelize there. Wow, come on. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in the impossible? Do you? Believe that we can change it to someone no one ever imagined that we could be. You can change. Yeah. I never thought I could change. Yeah, come on. I'm Australian. I never thought I could stop swearing. <laughs> I say it two or three times in one sentence. Okay. I changed. Come on. Come do you on, believe on. that God can do the impossible? Yes. 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 You know that God also destined that 25 disciples mm -hmm. would start a movement that in less than 14 years would plant uh, uh, just under 130 churches mm -hmm. around the world. Mm, wow. 130. Wow. Just under that. Yeah. In 14 years, wow. with only 25 people. Okay. Do you believe that God can do the impossible? Yes. They believe it's impossible to start a movement that would have a global impact. But that's exactly what Joshua did. Yeah. And that's exactly what God is going to do here. Yeah. So now you see only a few people, but in years to come, I'm telling you there's going to be thousands in an auditorium. Come on. Hong Kong. Come on. on. Oh, you think that might be impossible? Mm -hmm. My Bible says with man this is impossible. Yeah. But with God, yeah. nothing is impossible. Yeah. Do you believe that in your heart today? You know, the word impossible, when you say that to my God, mm -hmm. my God's thinking, is that a challenge? <laughs> he sees the word and he's like, that's just a challenge. Yeah, yeah. For myself. Come on. Come on. 
we must become dreamers. Yeah, come on. And people who make our dreams come true by holding on to the promises of God yeah. and seeing it through that God will change the world through us. Mm. With God, nothing is impossible. Yeah. In conclusion, guys, you've got to have a promised land mentality. Yeah, come on. That whatever it is with God, anything can happen. You've always got to embrace the battle. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've always got to expect the impossible. Mm -hmm. You can. You will. You must. Yeah, and we on. need to proclaim to everyone, in front of everyone, I will. Yeah.